All right, so we're here to introduce the resilience and revitalization zine today. Um, so I will be reading the opening myth from our guide, Shailai. Hi, I'm Shailai. My people left your planet at the beginning of the year 2022 during the disharmonization. Actually, we sort of caused it, but that's another story. We were humans once too, but to avoid the collapse of what you call the earth, we had to become something different, something more and in some ways less. My ancestor was part of a collective that opened a wormhole to the future I live in by tapping into a unique frequency accessed through creativity and visioning of a liberatory future. At that time, there was a pandemic. Most people had a lot of debt and no guaranteed housing, healthcare, education, or even food. So they needed to spend 40 hours a week for 40 years of their lives working mostly for big corporations and institutions that caused more problems than they solved. Four ancient guardians who guide human evolution heard their vision and formed an alliance with the most powerful being on earth, the mycelial mother. They performed a ritual to open a wormhole to the place where my people thrive. The stories, recipes, spells, and visions collected here in this zine will help you tap into that frequency so that maybe you can come with them. Maybe it's you, my ancestor, reading this. If so, thank you. I love my life here in the world you helped to create, a world where we can realize our potential individually and collectively and live in care and abundance in ways that must seem nearly impossible to you. It is in our nature to be free together. You'll find lots of clues in these pages, anchors and guides that can help you find us. Find me, find your pod, and find yourself. Good luck. Would y'all like me to go ahead and kick us off um, to introduce some of the contributors who are going to be reading next? Okay, wonderful. All right, I think we are going to hear from Zen first, um, if you are good to go, Zen. So Zen Lara is a Chicanx disabled queer trans healer, community organizer, TJ practitioner, systems thinker, cultural and tech worker living on Muscogee Creek lands in Atlanta. So glad to be able to introduce you, Zen, and I will turn it over to you to introduce what you're gonna be sharing with us. Thank you for that introduction. Um, yeah, so my piece, um, my contribution to this work um, starts with defining uh, some prompts of things to clearly define in relationship. Um, and then gives an answer to a question. Um, so I'll just start reading now. Things I like to have clearly defined. Sit down with someone and talk about how you relate to some of these notions. How does it change relating to have co-created definitions for these things? Safety versus comfort. Virtues versus values. Boundaries versus rules feelings versus the story of feels, loyalty versus autonomy, humanity versus intellect, felt sense versus self-talk, accountable versus guilty, family versus kin, respect versus dignity, stress versus stressors, love versus romance, guest culture versus ask culture, interdependence versus responsibility, support versus idolization, and solidarity versus trauma bonding. You do so much for people. I don't wanna be a burden. How do I avoid making your life harder? This is a question from someone to me that I'm then answering. <laughs> I seem busier than I actually am 80% of the time. This is partially because of my ADHD. It may seem like I have a thousand projects that must be of relative priority and on a reasonable timeline because of the number of things that seem relevant on any given day. Trust me, I spend a good bit of my time lying around reading or meditating 
because without this, I collapse into shaking, anxious weepings and who can't sleep. One of the gifts of a body that feels intensely is that it won't let me neglect the basics of rest, boundaries, and restful activity. What you may be seeing as active and depleting activity may actually be my way of resting. Processing emotions with friends is restful for me the majority of the time. Please trust me to establish and communicate my boundaries as you approach them. Support me in being accountable to myself by reminding me to check in with myself about my capacity, but don't push when I say I've checked in and decided I do have the capacity. I feel this profoundly as a denial of my agency. As someone with capacity that's severely diminished by disability, I cherish being present for my loved ones. I feel to, I need to feel my agency respected in communicating my shifting capacity. I feel distress when trauma keeps me and my loved ones at arm's length. I want us both to learn how to help each other. And I can commit that if a process of mutual aid has failed us, we can adjust the process without having to pull away from helping each other completely. So you're absolutely not a burden, my love. We're in this existence together and we move through inhale, exhale, helper, helped. It's the rhythm of living. My hope is you can feel safe through the cycles. I'm building and healing towards that myself. And thank you for sharing this hurt with me. Keep asking until it feels answered. That's what I want relationship with me to feel like a space where the questions you have can be asked and we can figure the answers out together. Thank you for being puzzled with me. <laughs> Thank you, Zen, that was really wonderful. <sighs> Seeing a lot of appreciation in the chat as well. In a moment, I am going to introduce, I believe Liliana, our next reader. Just let me just make sure. Yes, okay, perfect. Um, and so Liliana, I really appreciated this bio. It made me smile. <laughs> when Liliana is not stressing, Gemini moon, cooking vegan food, Pisces sun, or working to dismantle the colonial heteropatriarchy, Sagittarius Rising, you can find her making music, writing poetry, dancing, and or cuddling with her cat. And we are going to be able to hear some of the words that Liliana has created as a real gift for us right now. Hi, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't even remember if this piece has a name, so I'm just gonna dive in. I pray to the sun because her rays are what I want to become. I pray to the moon, knowing the shadow is something I will embrace soon. Notice the chatter that prevents your focus on the matter in front of you. In the present, take in all that is in view. Let go of what your thoughts think you should do. Listen to your heart. To safety, your intuition will always guide you. Light uncovers the dark. Light uncovers the dark. Light uncovers the dark. Light uncovers the dark. Peace and prosperity. Peace and prosper with me. Thank you. Thank you. So next, wow, yeah. Just thought we should actually take one more pause before moving on, it's beautiful. Thank you so much, Liliana. Next we have Kai, I think, our very own Kai. And I'm delighted to be able to introduce them, someone I got to work with a lot recently. Kai is a certified sex educator, coach, and healing practitioner who supports people in their sexual healing by focusing on pleasure 
and Kai is going to be sharing a piece that I really love. So I'm really excited to hear it in their voice. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so this piece is called Ecosystem of Healing. And it is really focused around question prompts that invite you into your own healing journey. Healing work is nonlinear with ebbs and flows. You may have a breakthrough and with that may come another crack in the surface to dig deeper. How might we equip ourselves for this constant gut-wrenching and nourishing work by creating our own ecosystem of healing? Abiotic components of an ecosystem are non-living elements that create an environment in which organisms can survive and thrive. You might think of sunlight, rain, and temperature. What are non-living modalities that support your healing? It could include taking a bath, tarot, an altar, tattoos, essential oils, adorning your body in clothes you love. Producers within a terrestrial ecosystem sustain life by taking in sunlight and using that energy to make their leaves, roots, and bark. Oak trees, moss, and plant life, such as ferns, might translate into healing modalities like cuddling with a friend or pets, eating your favorite foods, herbal medicine, or drinking tea. What are ways in which you take in energy? Are there people in your life or things you love to do that nourish your being? Consumers of an ecosystem cannot produce their own sustenance, like deer who are herb herbivores or foxes as predators of other small animals. What can you consume that pushes your growth towards healing? Possibly books, music, conversations, workshops, or podcasts that benefit your spirit, but also move you towards growth edges of healing. They may urge you to be brave and vulnerable in this learning process. Decomposers are the nutrient cycle within an eco ecosystem. They break down dead animals and plants into compost so that plants can use them to make more food. Shelf fungus growing on the side of trees, snails, or bacteria all play this role. What are healing tools that allow you to break down trauma slowly into nutrient-rich soil? Think of journaling, Reiki, meditation, movement, acupuncture, or therapy. Thank you so much. I'm going to pass it back to Barry now. Thank you so much, Kai. Next, I am going to introduce Corey Davenport. Corey is a bi-gender Afro-surrealist and multidisciplinary artist with a strong affinity to plants, planets, and other celestial bodies whose work centers pleasure in all forms. Corey, can't wait to hear from you. Hi, everyone. I have my apologies for being late. <laughs> Hi, I can see the chat now. <laughs> I had contributed a Black Time Traveler's Guide to Conversation, and I'm actually going to go ahead and pull it up so I can read a quick introduction from it. Let's see. And I had just a little bit of a rough entry, <laughs> so I'm a bit off my game right now. So thank you for bearing with me. Let's see. Okay, so a little bit of background information. When I first um, worked on this, I had a whole bunch of different, I had another set of years and dates set for, um, set for each conversation piece. And it'll all make sense once I get through the introduction. But the dates are all related to the sign that Mercury is in. So Mercury moves around, Earth moves around, the Sun moves around, everybody's moving around. <laughs> but um, this conversation guide to intimate, or this guide to intimate conversation, was um, all centered on the astrological sign, or astronomical sign even that uh, Mercury would enter. So 
just keeping with the lineage of Benjamin Banneker and Almanac making and just continuing to look at the stars, I will go ahead and read um, just the intro. And I won't necessarily go through all of the conversation pieces. Uh, it starts actually in August, but I do have a special um, Cancer Mercury prompt that I would invite people to respond to or even like journal or ponder over. So without further ado, begin transmission. In a time where the need for a sense of familiarity and closeness is at its highest, along with the added complication of social distancing, we have, we have reached a place where intimacy seems especially hard to come by. This guide offers a way to connect with questions based on the astrological sign that Mercury representing wit and communication enters over the course of several months. A conversational horoscope, if you will. To feel even closer while spending time apart, read through the conversation topic with a friend, partner, family member, or even journal about them alone after taking time to stargaze together. Apps like Starwalk 2 are especially helpful for identifying plants, rising times, and locating constellations. So as far as the rest of the guide, there are a few um, guiding questions that go from Leo to Virgo to Libra. Um, and those beginning dates are August 8th, August 26th, September 21st, along with two retrogrades. And with the retrogrades, the, um, the questions are returning back to a sign, just the essence of a retrograde. And they ask a bit of a twist on um, previous topics. So I have a couple of options and just wanna like know how we are on time. Do we want to have the cancer um, conversation topic or just reading through a few of the questions? Y'all can unmute yourselves. I would love the, um, the cancer discussion questions. I think that would be really beautiful right now. Okay. Fantastic. And I can transcribe them in the chat so folks can maybe like, they can have that as a reminder if they want to journal about it afterwards. Definitely. Let's see. So because Leo, um, Mercury enters Leo on August 8th, right now, Mercury is in Cancer. The moon was in Cancer like a few days ago, sun's in Cancer right now, big watery feels. <laughs> so I'll put it in the chat. And about the sign Cancer is pretty much the fourth sign in the zodiac. It focuses on water, the moon. Um, it focuses on senses of home, a lot of motherliness. Um, yeah, the generally ideas of home and home building. So home is where you return to comfort and there's no place quite like it. What is an item that can bring home to you? You can respond in the chat. You can think about it a little bit. Feel free to take yourselves off mute. And if it helps, for me, an item that brings home to me would probably be either, if not the teapot itself, but a very, very lovely cup of tea. I have a thing for both. <laughs> On that note, espresso with milk is always bringing me home and I'm drinking too much of it. Yeah. And she's not an item per se, but this is Lord Audre. And I would say that, um, yeah, she's moved around with us for the last five years and has definitely, um, you know, been on some adventures with us. And I would say that she's pretty core to my sense of like home being. And in line with us introducing folks who also have blue outfits on, this is Trevolio, AKA Trevi. And he has on his matching striped hoodie with me um, for Forza Azuri. <laughs> yeah, anyone else want to share? For me, a sense of home is um, like fuzzy blankets or like stuffed animals or pillows, like anything that's like really soft and fuzzy as soon as I'm like holding it or like swaddled in it, I'm like, ah, this is home. Like no matter where I am, like, ah, this is home. <laughs> so that kind of like softness and like tactile feel is, is home for me. I agree with both of what people said. I also have a cat, right? So she goes wherever I go. And I also love my fuzzy blankets. That is so 
spot on um my other thing I was thinking are um clothing items for me because I usually I have a lot of things that are like relatives like my grandma my mom's my sisters like my friends so it's like whenever I wear that stuff I think of them and like wherever I am I could think of them so that's another thing that makes me think of home beautiful like, oh go ahead I think one of the things that feels always very closely tied to home for me is like I think home can be oftentimes like wherever my hair products are like if like I'm comfortable enough to like have my all of my variant tools <laughs> somewhere then like I can probably call it home and if it has those things already waiting for me when I get there then that is often also home um yeah I love that that of um connecting those things together and what um what makes us um I was um, thinking about was safety, really simple, but um, those things that keep us safe um, um, for me, finding that most important, um, as well as the hair product I'm using. I think both of them together <laughs> are a, a good match. Then or Barry, did you, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I very much resonate with bedding, very like luxurious, like it encompasses me. <laughs> I can be, I have a much larger bed than I need or believed I needed. I, I now believe that this is the size bed that I need. Um, that very much feels like home. Even when I go camping, I have like no air mattress for me. It's like a full on folding camping mattress with all of my bedding. And aside from that, like a, a sense of emotional grounding, I think of my, my best friend's voice. Um, they live with me, but they were out of town for three and a half weeks recently. And I did everything I could to comfort myself at home. And my home is very oriented towards comfort and like, and very grounding, but their voice like immediately brought me back into my body and into a sense of grounding and home. Thank you for sharing. And Barry, did you want to go? Sure. I love this prompt. This is, this is great, Corey. Um, I, yeah, I think I was having trouble thinking of an object because I've spent so much time traveling and often felt like really deeply at home. I think more with specific people thought of thought of the people I was with in these like transient communities as being home. So I definitely resonated with the sound of a voice as being like a an anchor to home. Um, yeah, I think one other thing I was thinking about is the way that fires smell. That that makes me immediately feel like comfortable and settled. Um, having smell it, I arrived, I arrived somewhere last night and I smelled a fire and I was like, ah, I've arrived. Yeah, I love that question. Thank you, Corey. Is there anything else you want to close us out with before we transition over to Karina? Sure, I'll um, I'll share a few of the uh, prompts. When I was creating this, it was like in the midst of COVID, and that's where the desire for you know intimate conversation as a way to be closer to people when you can't be closer to people. And one of the most unifying things, whether you're down the street from each other in different time zones across the world and you have to wait 12 hours to see it, would be the stars. So with all that being said, um, I did go ahead and include a few themed, um, a few themed prompts that'll kind of guide people through a story um, between now and February of 2022. So I'll just read a couple of these questions and, or a few of these questions and feel free to let your mind wander, imagine, maybe like scribble some notes, draw pictures or anything like that. So for Virgo, 
Uh, the prompts is, you're preparing to open an intergalactic bed and breakfast. Where is your inn located? What's the view like? And for everybody who said blankets, <laughs> describe the bedding and the towels. What would be on the menu? And with, with retrograde and Virgo, also so you have your heads up for your retrogrades, just so you know. <laughs> Guests at the end love sharing stories of their work and travels. Recount your favorite stop in your travels across the galaxy and what made it so stellar. For Libra season, and Libra is all about beauty, one of the guests at your space hotel is a curator for the largest museum in the Milky Way and would like a piece to represent modern human culture. And apparently the Voyager's golden records didn't make the cut this time. If you could take a famous work of art and change three details to reflect your personality, what would the piece look like? So in Scorpio season, we are thinking about transformation and the curator has returned with a gift for the inn. It's time to refresh the museum's exhibits and an eccentric collector is offering a piece to place in your lobby. Each covered with a plain white sheet, you have the choice of a large flat object with a hazy purple glow and a smaller box shaped item that occasionally, that occasionally shakes and smells faintly of raspberries. Which do you choose and what do you get? And I saw the, <laughs> I saw the furrowing of Barry's brow. <laughs> there is a part of the universe apparently like somewhere in a galaxy where there are chemicals that smell like raspberries. I promise you like, I, I cannot make this up. I could make it up, but <laughs> there is a part of the, some galaxy that smells like raspberries. Let's see, in Sagittarius being all about expansion and long distance travel, your hard work has been noticed by one of your more affluent guests and they like to offer you a year long vacation on the exoplanet Osiris which you found later was equal to about three and a half days on Earth. Since the planet is a sweltering 1800 degrees, you spend your time in the air conditioned simulator that has a few different presets depicting other exciting worlds. Where does your simulated excursion lead you? What color is the sky? And describe some of the flora and fauna. So I will leave the rest, including the retrograde to Sagittarius to the zine, but that, those are a few of the questions and thoughts in the Black Time Traveler's Guide to Intimate Conversation. Thank you, everyone. Ah, thank you so much, Corey, and everybody else who shared. And I'm now really wanting to share these prompts with some people I want to have intimate conversations with, particularly people with signs we haven't heard from yet. This is, yeah, it feels like such a rich, rich launching point for connection. I love it. I'm now going to hand it over to Karina Norton, another of our very own spring uppers. Well, we're all spring uppers, but another more, slightly more internal spring upper. Karina is a homie organizer and certified mediator. They love tending to their plants, creating spaces that center joy and laughter and believe that building intentional, accountable relationships and communities rooted in care and consent can and will transform our worlds. Wow, I, I love that bio. Um, I can't wait to hear what Karina has to share with us. Um, thank you so much for that introduction, Barry. Yeah, bios are so weird. I <laughs> didn't know how to write mine um, and yeah. So thank you. <laughs> um, my piece is called Salvation. It doesn't have like a, yeah, like a more, I was workshopping the title and then gave up on that. Um, the context for this poem is that I wrote it when I was like in the middle of like a lot of stuff. It was one of those pieces I always say that kind of just like wrote itself. Um, and then I had to like figure out like what the message was like retroactively. Um, and I feel like one of the things that like really stood out to me about this piece was how it was like very like self-centered, like very like I, very like me. And I was like, and it was because I hadn't, I think I hadn't been focusing on like how I had been like on the things that like were within my control, you know, and like the things that I particularly was feeling and like experiencing, right. And like, just kind of like all of those things, right. So I feel like this was a perspective piece for me where it was like okay like there's a lot of we there's a lot of us there's a lot of like collectively oriented I think like 
thinking, but like when it comes down to like what's going on in your body and like what's coming up, like only you can identify that for you, you know? Um, and I feel like this piece was like a reminder, you know, that like whatever I'm experiencing or like whatever's happening in like my life, you know, in our collective life in this like universe, whatever this like shared experience um, that like I have to be able to locate my locate myself within it um so that I can you know like show up for myself and like show up for my own healing too okay so it's the salvation um breath alone scorches my lungs and I inhale deep hold taste deja vu on my tongue the known dances behind closed lips burning me feeling fate I choke as I rush to soothe, to numb, to be ice on the spheres of your touch. I drift, turn soft ash, smother white fires with unsettled flesh, fires by your hand, which have charred me too. Suffocated in this thick smoke of my own creation, I finally crumble in the wake of our mutual destruction, but you are still burning, burning. I rise from cold ash, from rest, reanimated by the urgency of your cry. For you, I will dive headlong into Phlegathon's belly. For you, I become inferno. Seek and devour familiar eyed demons. For you, I will rise burn and rise again. For you, I will sacrifice her. We call it salvation. Wow. Thank you so much, Karina. That made me tear up a little bit. That was, that was, feels like a really, really perfect way to kind of close out this section. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm going to introduce a final sharing now um, that I think Stas is going to be reading to us. Um, and I'm also going to introduce Lee, who read earlier in the beginning, um, introduce, kind of introduce them together as a team. So Lee, or Leander S.R. Phoenix, his official title is mathematician and co-founder, as well as vision keeper of Spring Up. I really love that. And Lee works to prevent and respond to gender-based violence as a consent educator, transformative justice practitioner, herbalist, and fiction writer based in Denver. He supported Shiley in transforming their mission to this realm, the being that we heard from earlier. And as I mentioned, we are also now going to hear from Stas, SR Phoenix, whose official title is Imaginatrix and co-founder, as well as vision keeper of Spring Up. And Stas is a non-binary Black Italian storyteller, abolitionist organizer, and healer, rooted in Denver, Colorado, and in Miami, Florida, and is going to be sharing directly with us now. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm here with Trevi, who's going to be supporting because it can be difficult to channel through the mycelial plane sometimes. So Trevi's going to ground me here in this uh, reality. And Shylai is um, a character that uh, we feel is an inspiration for Spring Up and for this resilience and revitalization zine. Um, and we're really passionate about uh, mycelium and mushrooms and the way that it connects all of us. So um, I invite you to think for a moment about wherever you are in the world, um, that there is 
mushroom spores in the air where you are. Uh, there is mycelial, mycelium beneath the ground um, that connects all of us. And uh, through the mycelial plane, we can connect with each other, with the past, with the future, and with other realities. Um, and that's part of what we were hoping to do with the zine was to ground it as little wormholes into a specific time and place that each of us has, has held that we believe puts us on the pathway towards an abolitionist future. Um, and that in that future, people like Shailai live in their complex genders and colors and visions and um, care for each other. And as Shailai said in the beginning, um, it is in our nature to be free together. And it is up to us to put us on the pathway that allows for that to become our reality and the truth is that we already have aspects of that reality here and now today as well as in the past and that's what we invite people to tap into not only to have aspirations for the future but to connect with the fact that that's already a part of our reality today yeah and i think things can just feel so dire and even apocalyptic um in this moment and in this time period and so we wanted to just think on a different scale of you know the mycelium and large like fungal bodies being the largest and oldest, you know, beings on this planet and all the things that they've seen and kind of borne witness to. Um, and also what I think mushrooms teach us about like the positive aspects of cycling, you know, and really thinking about things on both very short and very long time frames. And um, they spring up all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I think just thinking um, what sort of futures can we summon and can we um, seek to amplify through the networks that we have access to. Yeah, so with that, we will read Shailai's closing message to us all. Um, it's a little warped if you look at the actual zine and then um, I'll actually find the link and make sure that everyone can get access to it. And if you're a patron at $5 or more, you'll be getting two copies in the mail. And if you contributed to the zine, you're getting more than two copies in the mail, plus some nice merch goodness. Um, okay, so hurry, hurry. It's almost too late. Slow down, slow down. You'll rush past the gate. The portal is open. The time is at hand. The choice remains yours. I just hold out my hand. Follow me. To get out of here, you'll have to face several tendencies in yourself. The first is the tendency to divide. Boundaries, binaries. The second is the tendency to conquer. Hierarchy. Good, bad, self, other, wise, fool, past, future, human, nature. The aquifer is unleashed, a spring emerges and life comes from it, an iris blooms in the midst of a desert. And with that, that is Shailai's kind of layered message. You might have to read it a couple times to kind of get what Shailai is getting at. Um, but yeah, and this also pairs with a longer myth that we have internal to spring up that folks can get access to after being um, part of the collective for over a year. So it's a, it's, a, it's a longer story, it goes much deeper, but you have to get deeper in the wormhole to find out the rest. Um, so yeah, I will go ahead and share the link to make sure that everyone has the ability to get access to it. And like I said, many of you will be getting print copies in the mail as well that has wonderful colors, lots, lots more contributions. Um, it's got a nice glossy cover and we have some really nice metallic stickers and postcards that you could use to actually uh, do Corey's prompts in slow uh, snail mail, if you'd like, with your friends through the mail. Um, but there's a lot of things that we're really excited to kind of bring what's in the digital space into your real life. Yeah, and so um, the zine is available for free in its digital format, which includes interviews with several of us, um, like, you know, different team members and contributors in like about 10 to 15 minutes of dialogue about um, these topics, about self-care, about resilience and sustainability um, and harm response. We have more comics and visual art as well. 
Yep. And so you can get that digital version for free on um, bluelight.academy. And we would hope that people would use that for like peer education. And also if you're a teacher or work with young people, um, it's a very like, art-based visual kind of um, entry point to having conversations about liberation and abolition with young people. Um, I think that would be awesome if people use that in like educational spaces. And we're just so excited that it's free because it was sponsored by um, Life Comes From It, which is a circle of peer practitioners of uh, restorative justice practitioners, indigenous peacemakers, and transformative justice practitioners, um, largely out in California. And they gave us a grant to sponsor this and to pay everybody and to have it available online for free. Yep. And then um, finally, if you would like to yeah, manifest some of these visual artifacts into your physical space, um, you can find merch on um, time to spring up.org. And that would be stickers of the um you know eternal guardians and of shyly and also um print copies of the zine itself and then also some really nice um art prints and posters to really bring the fantasy into your into your home space or give it as a gift exactly yeah i think those would be great gifts oh yeah and then also tote bags i know we all they're important to all of us and so queer culture you can get uh tote bags featuring um, Shilai and also the spring up mushrooms. And then I also wanted to say that all of this art was created by Zoe Rayer. Zoe Rayer. We worked really closely with Zoe over, you know, months and weekends to build out these concepts. Um, but Zoe like just did the intricate pen work to bring it all to reality. And then um, Shaina Dolini did a lot of graphic design to wrestle everyone's everything into, into the same frequency <laughs> into the same frequency um so shout out to the art art folks amazing thank you all so much